calorimetry. And we're going to do a whole lab on calorimetry. And basically what we're doing is measuring the change in the enthalpy uh, by looking at the, uh, me measuring the change in temperature, so the magnitude of the change in temperature. So heat capacity is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one substance by one Kelvin. Uh, one degree Kelvin or one Kelvin or one degree Celsius. So remember that the change in uh, temperature in Kelvin is the same as the change in temperature in Celsius. So that's the, the delta T in Kelvin is the same as the delta T uh, in degrees Celsius. So, and again, um, I think we've looked at this before, but suppose you had a temperature scale and it was, um, you have 100 and you have zero. Right, for Celsius, right? The difference between um, freezing and boiling, that delta T in Celsius is 100. Well, if you were to change all of the Celsius into the Kelvin scale, how do you go from Celsius to Kelvin? You just have to add 273. So this is 373 and this is 273. And if you were to do the change in um, temperature over here, 373 minus 273, remember that delta is always the final minus initial, um, you get 100 degrees here as well, 100, so 100 Kelvin. Fisher delta T and Kelvin. So the change in temperature is the same whether you're talking about Celsius or Kelvin. If you're there's the change, so the delta is the same. So heat capacity is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature by one degree or one Kelvin. Specific heat capacity is a little bit different. You're specifically talking about one gram of your substance. So it's the amount of energy required to raise uh, raise the temperature of one gram of substance by one Kelvin. So the units are going to be a little bit different. Um, so down here in this table you have different specific heat capacities for different substances and so you can see it's um, joules per gram Kelvin. So it's the amount of energy, it, energy joules, energy is a, a measured in joules, um, gram is the mass, and Kelvin is your temperature. And so you can relate the heat equation here um, has specific heat in it. So Q equals MC delta T. Q is heat, right, so you have basically the heat you're talking about. Um, this is your mass and it's going to be in grams because the specific heat capacity is usually in, sorry, that's, that's your specific heat right, right there. Um, and the units of that are joules per gram, Kelvin. It doesn't really matter the delta T, it's not going to matter because remember delta T in Kelvin is the same as the delta T in Celsius. So if you have a delta T in Celsius, don't convert it to, don't add 273 to it and, and that's, that's not right because you're already in the delta T. You're, you're, sorry, yeah, the delta T is the same in, in both Kelvin and Celsius. Um, so if this is in, let's just put that in Kelvin, and the C is in joules per gram degree, um, gram Kelvin. All right, so that C is specific heat. So these specific heat capacities, again, these are different substances and what their values are. And you can see they, they range a little bit. So down here, um, like these metals here, you have aluminum and you have iron, you have mercury. They have pretty low heat capacities. Something like water has a 4.18. 4.18. We're going to see that number again. Um, and so that, what that really means is it takes a lot of heat, it takes a lot of, um, of energy to increase the temperature of uh, one gram of water by one Kelvin, right? So it's going to take four times as much as it would for, you know, to increase the temperature of aluminum. So if you were, you know, applying the same amount of heat, um, it, aluminum would heat up really fast, uh, but water would take uh, much longer to boil, right? It would take more energy to get it there uh, to increase the temperature. So that's good for us because you don't want water, you know, what if water, um, every time it got a little bit hot outside, a water would start to boil, it would evaporate, we wouldn't have like an ocean, which would kind of suck for the fish. So we're kind of happy that water has a high heat capacity. It, it allows us to live um, on Earth. So the next question here is, uh, is kind of a, a thought process you want to think about this one. So which substance above, so in that table, undergoes the greatest temperature change, so the greatest temperature change, great, uh, when the same mass of, of each substance absorbs the same quantity of heat. So basically what we want to do is compare, um, you know, heat. So what do we know about heat? We know Q is equal to mc delta t, right? And if we had two substances, let's look at this equation for two different substances, right? So we have Q equals mc delta t. That's a delta and that's a T. And we want to basically relate the specific heat to this change in temperature. How, how, how are they related? So if you have the same, um, what do they tell us? 
undergo which one uh, sorry the same quantity of heat so the Q's are the same so basically and the masses are the same so basically we're gonna set these two equations equal to each other so if the Q is the same suppose they're both 500 then we set these equal you know this is 500 this is 500 or MC Delta T is equal to MC Delta T um, let's see so MC Delta T of one substance we'll call that one equals the mc delta t of the second substance. So all I'm saying is that q1, basically q1, is equal to q2 here. And I'm just going to solve these equations. Now, if the mass is the same, I can just ignore this. They're going to cancel. And so what I end up with is the c1 delta t, yeah, delta t1 equals c2 delta t2, which basically looks, means that they're inversely proportional. So if I increase the specific heat, then the change in temperature uh, is going to go down or the other way around. If I have a high change in temperature, that happens when I have a really low specific heat. And that should kind of make sense. So this is basically saying whoever has the smallest specific heat is going to see the biggest change in temperature. Um, and that's exactly, that's exactly what we find. So something that has a really small specific heat will have an increase, um, a bigger increase in temperature as long as the mass, uh, the mass and the, the heat are constant. So let's play around with this equation again and apply it to this kind of word problem. Uh, so we have a large bed of rocks are used in some solar heated homes to store heat. Assume the specific heat, all right, so that's specific heat, that's C, right? So they're giving us the specific heat of the rocks is 0.82 joules per gram K. And they want us to calculate the quantity of heat. Quantity of heat is Q. So a lot of people confuse specific heat and heat. Heat is just Q. The units are gonna be joules for that guy, or kilojoules, or some just one unit of heat. Specific heat is gonna be joules per gram K, or joules per gram degree C, joules per mass times change in temperature. All right, so Q is the one that only has like one unit, C has all the crazy units. So calculate Q, calculate heat, absorbed when you have 50 grams, 50 kilograms, so that's our mass, um, if the uh, if their temperature increases by 12 so increases by 12 that doesn't mean it's it's increasing to 12 but it's increasing by 12 degrees that's your delta t right so the equation that we're really looking to use here is q equals mc delta t and m is given to us right they say m is 50 kilograms and c was given to us in the first part that's 0.82 joules per gram kelvin and delta T is 12 degrees C, which is the same in Kelvin, right? So that's the same as 12 Kelvin because we're looking at the delta, we're looking at the change in temperature. Um, so when you look at these units, you have um, kilograms and grams can't be together. So let's try to get everything into grams and then we can, we can convert these. Um, in one kilogram, there are a thousand grams, right? So you have 50,000 grams um, there. And now you can just plug that in. So Q is equal to M, which is 50,000 grams. C, which is 0.82 joules per gram K. And delta T was 12 K. So when you work all that out, put in scientific notation, you end up with 4.9 times 10 to the 5 joules. Okay. Now, um, similar, so we can add on to this problem a little bit using the same equation. So what temperature changed? Now we want to find delta T. Uh, would you expect these rocks to undergo if they emitted? So they're releasing, so that's negative, right? They're, they're releasing this much heat. So their Q is negative 450 kilojoules. All right, so your specific heat is still the same. Um, your mass is still the same. You didn't change that. So if I had, you know, Q equals MC delta T, and I want to solve for delta T, I can rearrange this equation. I can just divide by MC. And so I get delta T is just Q over MC. If you like to plug everything in and then solve, you can do that too. That's perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to do it this way. You should get the same answer. Delta T is Q. So Q is right here. It's negative. Um, 450 kilojoules. All right, so how do I convert that to joules? I want that in joules because my C is in joules. I want to make sure my units are, are the same. So right there, just pause for a second. You really just have to add a thousand, right? Because they're 450 kilojoules. In one kilojoule, there's a thousand joules. So you end up with uh, 450 
one, two, three at the end there. So I have negative four, five, oh, 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 that's a four. Um, kilojoule, uh, joules. Mass, I had 50,000 grams. And then my um, C is still the same, 0.82 joules per gram K. And there my joules cancel, my grams cancel, and I end up with something in Kelvin. I got like a negative 11 Kelvin, so that just means the temperature is decreasing, which is what you would expect as they're emitting heat. The, the, the heat should go down, the temperature should go down. Okay, so make sure you do a couple more of those um, for homework.